Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So this video is dedicated to the upcoming new race that is going to be hitting the tabletop very, very soon in Warmer 40,000 called the Leagues of Votan. I want to give a big shout out to a chap called Georgie Kane. Um, he was a chap who posted this over on Reddit. I'll include the links to, to him and his thread over on Reddit. Um, go over, give him a like, a big thumbs up because without him, this video would not be possible. So let's jump in and let's explore this new Voltan lore. So as you can see with the YouTube video that this is going to be split into three main parts of the lore. The first part being the leagues of Voltan, the second part being the leagues themselves, and the third part being the Voltan themselves. So starting with the leagues of Voltan, it's stated here that the kin are described as being really strong as a faction, specifically with leagues being described as huge interstellar empires. The league straddle the line between Abhumans and Xenos for the Imperium. There is much binding the two together. The leagues of Voltan, it states here, is actually more populous than the Eldari and the Tau throughout the galaxy. The galaxy's core itself is described as having crazy amounts of wealth and minerals and is quite inhospitable to other races. Ancestor cores first created the clone skins. Kin value individuality, including those caused by mutation. Often kin may get physical alterations such as hairstyles, tattoos, and piercings. Clone skin templates can actually lower the lifespan of a kin, though that does depend on the mutation. Iron Kin have been with the Kin since the leagues had records. It goes on to state that Iron Kin are often not cows or in positions of leadership, though it can happen. Each Iron Kin consists of a CU or cerebral unit and medical body. The CU and the body are unique to each individual Iron Kin, and it says here in brackets, and potentially may have modifications to help out in the tasks that the Iron Kin does. CUs are nigh indestructible, and Iron Kin can literally survive as just as a CU, though they may enter a state of tapor and may activate a distress beacon. Kin will go to great lengths to get a CU that is in distress, treating them as kin in distress. Both the kin and iron skin are designed and created by ancestor cores, but some cores have lost this ability. Brockhurst and iron kin gills can create new iron kin, though it's not as good as the ancestor cores. When a kin or iron kin dies, their physical form is recycled to the Votan in order to make a new kin slash iron kin. It appears that the kin's memories are taken up in the ancestor core and the Iron King's data is processed in this manner. Iron Kin can still be alive up to potential centuries, though as they get older, they will become more insular and slow due to taking in so much information. Kin and Iron Kin naming conventions are roughly the same. During each Kin slash Iron Kin gets a name by the Voltan called the first or given name given by the ancestors. To change it is considered to be disrespectful. The second name is a chosen name, which the Iron Kin either choosing one or both names. They, the chosen name often incorporates the Kin slash Iron Kin's family name, a league or occupation, though the names can be accumulated over time, though these are given by other Kin in honor of some other achievements. Cogs are robotic assistants that can be used for loading, combat, or other forms of tasks. Cogs are not as nearly advanced as Iron Kin. They are akin to Tau drones for the leagues. The Kin, when directly dealing or allied with humans, do not bring up the subject of Iron Kin and the leagues. They use artificial intelligence around humans. If directly pressed, the Kin will not lie about the Iron Kin or Cogs, often causing conflict with human allies. Ancestor cores are closely guarded secrets. The concepts of the Votan are kept intentionally vague around every non-kin race. Moving on to the second part of the video, which is titled The Leagues, and this says kin of a kindred share the same crucible and thus genetic bond. There are four aspects of the kindred referred to as the four pillars. 
hearth is the hearth of the hold, literally the heat and the light of the forges, recycle air and let the kin thrive. Uh, the next one is the forge, here everything the kindred need is built, from weapons to life support systems. The next one is called Thane, where the Grimier interface with the ancestor cores. And the last one is the Crucible, where the flesh and the blood kin are made. Kindred are each governed by a council of senior officers, guildmasters, and Grimier. They are slow to change their minds or come to decisions. It is said that the kin of a kindred have a ability to understand each other. Not all kin do join a guild, though a membership of a guild can be beneficial to a kin. There is no exact number of known leagues. The kin find no use in to keep track of it. Leagues are described as something nomadic. Each league is unique and they are made up of a different number of kindreds. The Greater Thurian League is the largest and of the leagues with over 200 kindreds and the largest amounts of territory in the core region of the galaxy. It goes on to state that they have a lot of military might and resources at their disposal and they want to expand their reach. Their members think they empathize what it means to be a kin. The next one is the Kronos Hegemone. They are most militaristic, formed less than 1,000 years ago. It goes on to say that Notable in their Votan has achieved self-awareness and has been demanding the Hegemone to always gather resources. Kindreds that join have to pay a hefty price to join and they have to pay hefty tributes through conquest. The Hegemone are super aggressive, even towards other leagues. The kin hosts of the Hegemone have broken Orc Wars and Imperial Crusades. The next one is the Ymir Conglomerate, and they value craftsmanship. They have an abundance of resources and skills. They have a higher amount of high-quality weaponry and equipment for their kin host. They are noted for trading beyond the core and all over the galaxy. The next one, which I'm probably going to struggle with, is the Yonari Sutter uh, that regulates, uh, which are basically stoic, pragmatic, and a bore waste. Though they are noted for less concerned with the living cost and materials for battle to prevent giving up ground. It goes on to state that they have been invaded by other groups into their territory. Most recently, a newly awakened Necron dynasty. Said Necrons seem to be obsessed with eliminating the regulates. The next one is called the Trans Hyperion Alliance, and apparently this is a nomadic league spread across the core and the rest of the galaxy in stations and ships. They communicate with each other to keep in contact with ancient technologies. This info is heavily ciphered. Uh, the nomadic lifestyle is due to a large part to gather resources or information to the Votan, having achieved a cult-like status. When calling uh, for a war league, the Voltanic Council has to be called. This consists of the High Carl, Lord Grimier, the Brockier Forgemaster, and any heroes of the Kindred. For smaller conflicts, this is reduced to more local leaderships. The most capable or suited kin are selected to lead their forces. There is a heated debate on who should be, though it rarely results in arguments and is done to find the best candidate for the job. Oathbound have a flexible format. They consist of whatever is required and whatever is available. A handful of kin hosts and millions of kin hosts would both count as oathbounds. Oathbounds are typically led by a Carl, though not always. Kin in an oathbound are obligated to serve the leader of the oathbound until their service is no longer needed. And finally, in this section, it says expeditions to far off worlds in search of resources or in search of wealth are called prospects. The strengths of these expeditions can vary wildly. And moving on to the last section, which is called the Votan. So it states here no league will risk harm to any ancestor core, and any kin will not hesitate to lay down their own life to protect an ancestry core. The word Votan is used freely enough, though it's never explained among non-kin. Votan are an ancient machine intelligence uh, uh, that are so powerful and complex, they are almost supernatural. It goes on to state that they hold all information needed that a race may need to survive. 
in the depth of space, including but not limited to SECs, uh, scientific and phil philosophical, I can't even bloody say that word, learnings, military strategy and fearer, weapon specifications, um, etc. Ancestor cores act as mini astronomicons, um, it says here, i.e. they have a presence in the warp that kin void fathers can sense, due in part to the Voltan being a massive resource of information. Most of the value of the Voltan is due in part to the knowledge they process. It states here more, knowledge they possess may be forgotten or lost if not used commonly. They become ponderous with each interaction with living kin. It is not known who made the Voltan. The Voltan never actually ruled or lead the leagues. They act more as repositories or advisors on occasion. Uh, the Voltan may make predictions uh, interpreted as uh, uh, visions by Grimiers or guide the kindreds. We have a name of a great cow from the Great League that is prophesied to complete a great task. And, you know, we don't know the name yet. Uh, ancestors of the Leagues, uh, the Voltan are explicitly critical in kin functioning. The kin are recently coming out more from the core of the galaxy, especially after the great rift and that is it that is all i have at this time again i want to say a massive thank you uh, to the chap who wrote all this george kane he got it from the warhammer plus um uh, votan video he did a great summary i'll put all the links over there i'm uh, sorry all the links in the description of this video if you want to go read it for yourself share it anywhere talk about it go and give this guy like a thumb up and everything like that and um, thank you for coming thank you for watching this video and um, what do you think of the votan this is part one it states so hopefully we'll get more information are you liking them so far do you dislike them um tell me what you think do you want to get a Voltan armor? See you now. Have a great day and bye-bye.